Ever since the news broke that Christian Horner had been accused of sexual harassment by Red Bull employee Fiona Hewitson, Formula One has been consumed by the scandal. Media coverage of the tawdry affair has dominated F1 at the expense of the races and the drivers. The subsequent civil war threatened to tear Red Bull apart as the European coalition of Mark Martischitz, Oliver Mintzlaff, the Verstappens, and Helmut Marko agitated for Horner sacking, while the Thai majority owner, with a history of shielding his son from accountability for the killing of a Thai policeman, shielded Christian Horner from accountability for sexually harassing his assistant. Before going further, we invite those of you who haven't yet done so, to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the notification icon, to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Expectedly, many within and outside the paddock, including Toto Wolff, criticized Red Bull's handling of the scandal, for lacking transparency and integrity. Toto's criticisms were referenced copiously by many media outlets, as he became the face of those concerned about Red Bull's handling of Christian's pecker, oops, sorry, sexual peccadilloes. Fiona's allegations were dismissed by Red Bull, following an investigation by an anonymous and supposedly independent male counsel. The counsel's report was suspiciously kept confidential, with portions reportedly withheld from even Fiona herself. To make matters worse, it has been widely reported that Fiona has since been sacked or suspended indefinitely. People allegedly speaking on her behalf have reportedly claimed that she is feeling alone and abandoned, and has been gagged and unable to speak out directly. Toto was even more critical of the FIA's interest in his and his wife's peccadilloes, as the Wolves launched a lawsuit against the organization for sexually motivated defamation of Mrs. Wolf. The lawsuit suggested that the FIA had opened a short-lived and baseless conflict of interest investigation into Mrs. Wolf on the sexist grounds that, as a woman, she could not be expected to not pass confidential information to her husband during pillow talk. As far as Mrs. Wolf's case was concerned, there were reports that the ill-fated FIA investigation had been opened as a result of a complaint made by Red Bull. The suspicion was so strong that it prompted not only Red Bull, but all the other team principals to band together to issue a joint statement denying having made such a report to the FIA. Under these circumstances, one would have expected a provoked Toto Wolf with a self-proclaimed reputation for punching back, who was championing his wife and his rival's female personal assistant, whose rights to fair treatment in a male-dominated F1 were being roundly abused by an evil duo who had also been provoking him mercilessly for years to deliver a Superman knockout punch to both at the same time by recruiting Fiona. A badass alpha wolf like Toto, who had made himself the chief critic of Red Bull's handling of Fiona's case, should have snapped up the opportunity to offer abandoned Fiona a job at Mercedes F1 and help her secure the services of a top lawyer to fight her case against fierce rival Red Bull. One can only imagine how damaging just parading Fiona in the paddock would have been to Red Bull, not to talk of the fear that all the Red Bull secrets that she had been privy to would now be available to Toto and Mercedes. The Mercedes-assisted prosecution of her case would have torn Red Bull apart, forced Horner out of F1, and possibly helped secure the services of Max Verstappen that Toto was reportedly keen to secure, as his dad and mentor are reportedly pro-Fiona. So, can anybody offer any suggestions as to why Toto has yet again chosen to cry wolf about Fiona's ill-treatment, without taking any action? To make matters worse, Fiona would be able to help Mrs. Wolf's case by shedding any light on whether Red Bull lodged a complaint against her or not. Because with her high-powered position as Horner's assistant and love interest, she would know. Surely, it cannot be that the virtue signaling Toto is only interested in appearing to be critical of Red Bull? Surely, this is not a signal that the renowned crying wolves do not have what it takes to see their lawsuit against the FIA through to the end. 
If Toto was prone to punching back when provoked, as he proclaimed in anger, when a reporter had the temerity to question his wife's employer's management of the Las Vegas Grand Prix, after a loose manhole had caused Carlos Sainz's Ferrari to crash, and put an end to the practice session for spectators and drivers, surely, he would have snapped Fiona up. But then, making much ado about berating the reporter does fit Toto's crying wolf profile, as much as failing to use Fiona to strike back at his rival does. How ironic would it be, if the FIA's lawyer, cited this incident, as evidence of a conflict of interest, between Toto's role as a team owner, whose primary concern should be the safety of his drivers, and that of a husband, who did not want to be critical of his wife's employers, who were responsible for the loose manhole cover. If there was more to Toto than crying wolf, he would have made Fiona, who is lost and alone, and begging to be saved, a member of the wolf pack expeditiously. Horner, who is fat and bloated, is ripe for the taking. The Red Bull is ready for the abattoir, and Mrs. Wolf's reputation is at stake, so why is Mr. Wolf howling rather than biting? Why is Fiona Hewitson not a highly prized member of the Wolf Pack?